In this part two of the video, what we're going to do is take this thermometer and we're going to attach it to the ESP32 device that we just flashed in our previous video. So let's get started. The first thing we need to assume is that you have Bluetooth enabled on whatever device you're going to do this on, whether it's your laptop, your PC or whatever, you're going to have to have Bluetooth to be able to talk to the device. The next step is we need to use what we call the tail link flasher. There are some other ways to do this that are much harder than this. This tail link flasher allows you to take the device and you can flash this and update it over the air using Bluetooth. So the first thing to do is go to this URL right here and I'll link these down below. Then we're gonna connect. You need to know what device shows up on here. You're gonna get a list of all the Bluetooth devices on your network or in range of your device. The thermometer is gonna show up as this LYWSD03 and I'm gonna pair it. It's gonna to connect to it over Bluetooth and it's gonna show me um, that it's got temperature and humidity and everything. So I know it's working. What I need to do next is do the activation. And the reason we're doing the activation is we need to get the bind key and the token. We're just gonna store those away for now in Notepad. I already did this once, so it's probably still the same. Okay, there's my key and my token. And I wanna upgrade the firmware. And you can see in this particular updater, I used to have to download this, but now it's available right here. So I can take this custom firmware and I can start flashing that firmware and you can watch the progress here as it flashes. It also logs it down here that it's starting. What we're doing is we're updating the firmware so that we can make some configuration changes on the device. You could probably do this without updating the firmware with the bind key and the token so that you can read the encrypted data, but I'm just going to update the firmware anyway so that I can make changes. For example, this device is actually in Fahrenheit or in Celsius. And I want it to be in Fahrenheit. And I also want it to update periodically, maybe fewer uh, times than normal to save the battery life. And so I'll be able to set those items once it updates. Okay, so now the update is complete and now it's disconnected. And I'm gonna reconnect to it. And now you see I have a whole bunch of settings in here. I wanna set my temperature to Fahrenheit. I want to turn my smiley or I'd set my smiley to whatever I want it to be. The smiley is a little face it makes on there. You can kind of see that at the bottom of, of that uh, display there. That's just a face it makes, I guess, that tells you whether it's comfortable or not. So here's your temperature offset, humidity offset, advertising, advertising type. I want to change that to me. I don't need an encrypted me beacon. And then I want the advertising interval to be set to uh, 2,500. I'm going to leave it at 2,500 milliseconds for now. Measuring interval is four. And I'm going to leave the rest. You can set the RF power and stuff like that. Now, all of this t is talked about on this, this GitHub page where it talks about the different options in the firmware settings. And now I can set all of the config settings I just changed. It's going to set all of that stuff over to my device. And now we can see already that it went from Fahrenheit or Celsius to Fahrenheit display. So I know that the settings took on the device. So that device is ready to go with the firmware settings. Now what we're going to have to do is go back over to our home assistant and we're going to have to make some configuration changes in our actual ESP32 device. So if I go to ESP Home and I open the web UI again, and we talked about this in the previous video, how I actually set this up initially, I'm going to edit this and I'm going to add some code that I've got here on the ESP Home website. Now the ESP Home.io site has a listing of all the devices that you can connect to an ESP device. In this case, we're looking at this particular thermometer right here. And there's two different options for setting this into a uh, home assistant or into the ESP home. You can use the stock firmware, which requires the bind key in order to decrypt the data, which we did. We got that when we activated it. 
We also have the device, if you use the ATC Me Thermometer custom firmware, uh, if we use Me Like, which I selected Me for the type, and we can see that over here, I selected Me, wherever it went to, right here, the advertising type is Me, so I selected that. And so I'm gonna use the Me Like advertisement, which requires, a you can use a dummy bind key. It has to be the correct number of characters here but you can use a dummy bind key. It doesn't have to be the exact bind key. Now, if you didn't update the firmware at all, you would have to use the bind key. Um, you still set it here, but you don't use it. So what I can do here is change all this or copy all of this as a sensor value. And I can go into my home assistant set up here and set it in here as a sensor. Oh, and see here it says it needs the ESP BLE32 tracker. So in order for it to understand this right here, we need to make sure that we set the ESP32. And let me look at that again. Uh, ESP32 BLE tracker. And you can set that in there because what that's going to do is tell the EL ESP board to to look for BLE devices. So it actually will scan for the, the BLE devices in, the, in its area. And I'm gonna name this uh, sensor name to guest BR temperature. And can I make it bigger? There you go, I can make it bigger for you. And we can do guest BR temperature or guest BR humidity. And we'll do guest BR battery level. And I'm going to save this. Actually, um, yeah, I'm going to save it now. I'm going to upload it, but instead of doing it over the USB, I'm going to attempt to do it over the air this time. And now it's going to connect and it's doing it over the air via Wi-Fi. So as long as you're on the Wi-Fi network, we're going to try to do over the air on the Wi-Fi network and we'll see how that works out. So again, it compiles it, it compiles and builds the firmware based on the settings that you have put in your setup. And it's going through and taking that configuration that I have and putting it all together so I can upload it to the device. That's what makes these ESP32 things so incredible is that they can, they can go in there and build um, things that you can talk to on the ESP32 device and you've seen a lot of them out there. I don't have a lot of examples in my mind, but there are a lot of ESP32 devices out there built on different things, uh, built on different extensions that then you can configure the 32 to listen to. The 8266 board was prior to the 32 board and it has a lot of things out there as well. So there's just so much you can do with these boards. They're very, very uh, configurable. Um, you can build all kinds of stuff and I'm very excited to start playing with these a little bit more. All right, so we're still waiting on the, the firmware to build and hopefully it's going to update over the air here in just a moment. All right, the program is now compiled. It's trying to find the IP address of guest bedroom load node local, which it did. So now we're doing an update over the Wi-Fi. So super excited that it was able to do this. The computer I'm on currently is connected to my wired network. It's the same network as my Wi-Fi is on. So this program figured out where this was and it got the IP and uploaded. Now it's done an over the air update successfully. And the program is now successful. So all it's doing here is looking at the log and it's starting to get information from that device. So we can look here that it sees it, has the bind key and actually I used the bind key from the sample instead of the bind key that I downloaded. But because I did the firmware upgrade, I don't, it doesn't matter that I did that. It, all that matters is that I have a bind key in there and it just uses it, uses, it, uses it as a dummy bind key. So what we're watching now is we're watching the log from the device itself, the ESP32, to see if my device, um, that I, the thermometer here actually updates. Now remember that I set the value for the update uh, to like four minutes or something. So this is not actually gonna update except every four minutes. You can tweak that value if you want to. 
to to update more often. Just remember that every time it fires up, it's going to have a battery um, a battery issue if you run it too many times. So the other thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to disconnect here, which I guess I can do just by refreshing that because it may not, these devices are only going to connect to one thing at a time. Now, one thing you can see, you might be able to see up there is a little Bluetooth symbol. It just went away, but the Bluetooth symbol will be active whenever there is actually a Bluetooth signal or when it's broadcasting its stuff. So we'll see that Bluetooth thing come on here in a minute, but I disconnected from the browser configuration or the firmware configuration, and now it's not on the Bluetooth anymore. So that means that it's free to announce itself. So we'll give it a minute here and we'll see, uh, and here's the device actually right here. This is the actual device that it just found. We will find out if it um, picks it up and puts it in as a sensor. So we'll give that just a few moments. Okay, so I watched the log files for a while and I do see that uh, if we look in our Home Assistant configuration, I'll go over here and open a new window. If we go to configuration integrations and we look at the ESP32 devices, you can see that the guest bedroom has three entities now. So these are the three entities that are being sent over from the ESP32 device into Home Assistant. There's no value on these right now. And one of the reasons I believe that is, is I made a mistake in my configuration. So I hope you've watched the video to this point because you're going to miss the fix for that mistake. If we look at this and we edit this file, you'll notice down here that I have my MAC address set to this value right here. This is probably not the MAC address on the device itself. And without the correct MAC address, it's not going to work. The bind key can be whatever you want it to be, but the MAC address is not going to work unless you have the correct one. So what I'm going to do is go back into my Telelink flasher here. I'm going to connect to that thermometer one more time. And I may have to turn off the ESP32 if it's connected to the thermometer because I can't connect to the thermometer with two different devices at the same time. So I'm going to see if it shows up as a scan and here it is. I'm going to pair it and I'm going to, and I should have gotten advertising Mac. I know the Mac address ends in one F seven, one five F D. And that's because that's the name it's given to me. I don't see the Mac address down here in anything else, but what I can do with that a seven, uh, or the F715FD is I can replace the last three uh, sets of characters in the configuration file. The first three should always be the same from the same manufacturer for the most part. So I know that I can then take these F, F715FD and replace it in the file here with the proper colons, of course. So F715FD. And what I'm going to need to do is save and re-upload the file one more time because it's ignoring this unless I have the correct MAC address. So we're going to recompile. We're going to re-upload it. And while it's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and refresh this page so it disconnects from the device. So when it's ready to go, uh, the thermometer's ready to go, or when the ESP is ready to go, the thermometer is not connected to something else Bluetooth. And we'll see if it picks it up quicker this time. And you can keep editing the ESP32 config file as you need if you need to change things. One of the things that MAC address prevents happening is if you have more of these ther thermometers around the house and you have more of the ESP32s, they don't try to connect all over the place. They'll, try to, they'll stay connected to the device or the node that you have running or have them set up for. So that's one way to keep kind of a, a, a handle on where things are connecting. So we're going to let this firmware upload in here in just a moment. And then we'll see if it picks up the temperature and humidity and battery level from the thermometer. And don't forget at the end of the video here, I'm going to show you how I'm using this in my refrigerator to alert me if the temperature gets too high. That's fine there. All right. So it's got its stuff. And now what we're going to see is hopefully as it scans, it's going to scan the Bluetooth frequency here 
and it's going to find all of my Bluetooth devices, including this thermostat. So here's my thermometer. You'll notice now it got the Xiaomi, Xiaomi, Xiaomi th device with the correct MAC address this time. It has my battery level. And so it's sending the state 72% with zero decimals of accuracy. If I go over here now, uh, hopefully I will see a battery level. And here it is. It's now brought my battery level from this thermometer all the way through my ESP32 device into Home Assistant via the integration, the ESP Home integration. And if we go back over here, um, see, and it actually found the other device in my refrigerator, which is far away. So now it's picked up my temperature in Celsius for some reason and my humidity. Uh, so let's check over here again and see if those got picked up. So here's my humidity level, 43%. And here is my temperature in Fahrenheit. So it converts it to Fahrenheit when it sends it across. So now everything is working as it should. So now what I wanna show you is I wanna show you how I'm using this in Home Assistant. I'll go over to my production device here and in node red, well, first of all, this is one thing I show here. This is the refrigerator temperature. This is the temperature coming from a very similar setup. I have another one of those Xiaomi. I have another one of these. It's inside the refrigerator. It's taped to the wall or stuck to the wall with Velcro. And then behind the refrigerator, plugged into the wall, I have another ESP32 board. And the signal is strong enough to get from inside the refrigerator out to the ESP32 board. And then allows me to send that to Home Assistant. And I watch the temperature on my dashboard here. So I, what I do with this is I go to node red and I set up a fridge sensor and it checks the temperature from that sensor uh, down here. It checks the temperature every 60 seconds. So it's updating the interval, the uh, temperature. That doesn't mean that the Xiaomi thing updates every 60 seconds, but this checks. If the temperature is, a, is above or below 50 degrees, it sends outputs different directions. So if it's above 50 degrees, it starts a 30 minute timer. And on that 30 minute timer, um, it creates a two hour loop. So every 30 minutes it will alert me, um, but it has to hit two hours of being above 50 degrees first. And it sends me that, um, that temp alert. Now I'm not gonna, not gonna go into this flow uh, in detail. I'm just showing you one of the options for the ESP32 with that sensor is to put it in your refrigerator and then put an ESP32 board near your refrigerator to pick up the signal. And then you can do things like this to automate uh, when you have a problem with the temperature, it'll alert you. So that's one of the ways I use it. I hope this was helpful to you. I know I went uh, kind of fast with some of this, um, but it's pretty simple if you just take the steps Remember to flash the thermometer. Make sure you grab your um, MAC address because you're going to need that. Get the configuration from the website. And again, those links are going to be down below uh, as, as of the time of this video. I don't know how long that stuff sticks around. And then I'll link uh, in my kit linked down below as well, which is an affiliate link. Um, so it doesn't cost you any more, but it, it does help fund the channel a little bit. There are links to the thermometers uh, that you can buy. I bought a three pack of these things uh, from, um, I think it was uh, Banggood or AliExpress. I can't remember which one, but I bought a, a three pack of these. And so I have three of them to play with. And I bought a, a pack of the ESP32 boards off of Amazon. All that's linked below. You can check that out. Anyway, we flashed it. We, we did the board. We did all the stuff we needed to do and brought ourselves in and to a very inexpensive way to monitor temperature uh, through Bluetooth low, low energy. And in that sensor section on, um, as a final thought here, on the sensor section within here, if you were to edit this, you can come in here and add a second sensor. So if you have two or three sensors in the same area, all you do is create another sensor. You would just duplicate this section right here. You would change the MAC address, give it some different names and then you would have another one of those temperature sensors in the same area. It doesn't prevent you from doing other sensors in the same ESP32 board as well. So you could have more platforms 
different platforms. If you have a different type of temperature sensor that's BLE, you could do the same thing here as well. Just set it to the appropriate settings based on the ESP uh, home website, wherever that happens to be here. Uh, so all these different platforms you can use. Anyway, uh, enough rambling about stuff. I hope you found the video useful. Comment down below, ask me questions on Discord. Uh, thumbs up if you liked the video, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.